Hey there, it's good to see you again. I hope you've been having a really great week. This video is going to be another Supermodel 3 performance test on the Pi 5. You see, a couple of weeks ago I had a comment on one of my much earlier videos, which was the one with the first full playthrough of Star Wars Trilogy on the Pi 5, and the commenter indicated that they were unable to get Sega Rally 2 running at normal speed on the 5. The comment suggested that the game was running at half speed, so I thought I'd uh, take a look at it and see what I could find out. So I'm not going to beat about the bush, I'm just going to get straight to the point. I can confirm that Sega Rally 2 can run at full speed on the Raspberry Pi 5. It's super smooth, near perfect in fact, with maybe the very occasional blip here and there, but nothing remotely distracting. Throughout gameplay, the frame rate being reported back from Supermodel 3 is a solid 60 frames per second, although I'm not entirely certain that this is necessarily an infallible indicator in this case, and you might find out why soon enough. But the game does run really well and is very playable, and I'm going to tell you how I managed to do it. First of all, I'm going to say that you need to be using the correct version of Supermodel 3. So many people out there are just using the one that comes from RetroPie Extras, which, if my memory serves me well, is the version that was maintained by Mechafatnik. The problem there is that the repo hasn't been maintained for years. I strongly recommend that you switch to the version of Supermodel 3 that is maintained by Dirtbag Zone. I'll put details down in the description of where you can find that, but know that DBX actually keeps his repo up to date and even makes improvements from time to time like adding the ability to monitor the frame rate and network play even. That's your first step. Number one, make sure your version of Supermodel 3 is up to date and not abandoned. Secondly, make sure the ROM you're using is recent ideally from the latest main ROM set. Make sure it is the parent ROM and not a clone. You see, there are two types of ROM, merged and non-merged. Sometimes, really more than sometimes, quite often actually, an arcade game would spawn multiple clone versions. They might have been bootleg versions or even regional variants. And in archiving all versions of every game, inevitably, many similar versions of games can be mistaken for each other. In a merged ROM set, a ROM for a game will include within itself ROMs for its clone variants as well. A non-merged ROM set keeps the variants distinct and separate, in separate files. Now, it might be difficult to find a recent non-merged ROM set, but it's not difficult to remove the clones if you do get a ROM from a merged set. I'll show you how to do that, but first I'm going to show you how to tell if your ROM is merged or not, and why it's important. You see, Supermodel is a bit funny about using merged ROMs, on the Pi at least, I'm not sure about on Windows. But if you try to load a game in Supermodel on the Pi from a merged ROM, for some reason Supermodel will use one of the clones instead of the parent game. And the clones are often substandard, they tend not to run as well. Now let me show you what I mean. Here I've loaded up Sega Rally 2, and this is the performance I'm getting out of it. Can you see the car flashing? Can you see the speed of the game vary depending on how much action is going on? Even though the supermodel is still reporting 60 frames per second, the speed is inconsistent. Now that's quite odd, I'm not quite sure why, uh, but I guess it's running slowly at 60 frames per second. But this poor performance is because Supermodel loaded up one of the clones instead of the parent, and that's because I'm using a merged ROM. Now let me show you how I know it's a clone. Here I'm looking at the file system on my Pi, and I'm going to look at the folder that contains the Supermodel 3 NVRAM files, which are the files that remember the settings for the games. The folder is at opt retropy configs supermodel 3 nvram if you're following along at home. As you can see I have a few uh, files already here from other games I've played in supermodel, but I don't have one for Sega Rally 2. The name of the file here will match the name of the game ROM, and Sega Rally 2's ROM is called srally2. Its clones will be some variant of that. 
After I've loaded the game and quit it, I can refresh this and now I can see a new file. It's called srally2dx. Now, that's not the correct one. That's one of the clones, even though the game ROM that I have is called srally2.zip. It's created an NVRAM file for srally2dx. So let's fix this. Here I'm going to find my ROM which is srally2.zip and I'm going to open it up and see what's inside. Now all these files that are just right there are all part of the parent ROM. I want to keep all those but at the top these subfolders each of them contain different files for the various clone versions. And look here's one called srally2dx. All we need to do is delete these subfolders from the zip being careful to leave all those other files intact. Simple as that. Now let's go back to the nvram folder and delete that clones nvram file. We don't need that anymore. Now when I load the game and quit I can refresh this folder and I can see that I now have a new nvram file for srally2 confirming that Supermodel 3 just loaded to the correct version of the game. Now, that's, the, that's a big step. Playing the game now is pretty good. But there is a little bit of very minor slowdown still in some of the busy spots that I noticed. And this is how I cleaned that up. Find the Supermodel3.ini file, which is in opt retropy configs Supermodel3. Open it up in a text editor, search for srally or srally2 and it should be the first result. But uh, if you're having trouble it's this section here that has srally2 in square brackets. This section contains a couple of settings that are exclusive to this game and we want to look at the setting power PC frequency and increase that from 60 to 100. That's the value that works well for me at least anyway. Now if you save it, and now when I launch the game, I get super smooth, consistent gameplay. I'll point out as well that my Raspberry Pi 5 is overclocked, modestly. And I'm sure that's probably helping a bit too. Now if you choose to overclock your Pi, make sure you know what you're doing. Do some reading up on it, make sure you have a good cooling solution in place. I've also kept the game's resolution the same as it was in the original arcade. Increasing the resolution will likely result in reduced performance as the Pi seems to be more or less at its limit here. There's not much processing power left to handle exponentially more pixels and maintain performance. So just bear that in mind. Now I'm going to shut up in a moment. I'm going to let you see what my gameplay looks like for a bit. I really hope you found this helpful. If you did, please hit the like button and leave a comment and maybe you'll consider subscribing to see what I get up to in the future. Anyway, check out some of my gameplay of Sega Rally 2 now running really well on the Raspberry Pi 5. Have a great weekend.
100, easy left, narrow, bridge, 100, easy left, maybe, 150, cross, K right, 150, K right, 150, easy left, 100, medium right, 150, in travel, 70, very long, easy left, 200, in tarmac, 50, cross, air in right, set point, 100, long, easy, oh, exit, 100, cross, narrow, bridge, 50, medium left, medium right, 100, easy right, 100, medium right, 150, cross, open hairpin left, 100, long, medium right, 50, long, easy right, maybe, 100, in ground, 100, medium left, Very, very long. 